from time to time we see some publicity given to and questions asked on so-called and i stress so-called asset protection trusts, also sometimes called family asset protection trusts or universal asset protection trusts. Be that as it may, the name that is then, let's have a look at whether some of the claims for these trusts are justified. Some of the claims that are most commonly made in relation to the benefits of having a so-called asset protection trust include these, protection from inheritance tax, protection from care home fees, protection from creditors, um, avoiding the need for probate, which got a little spike of interest when probate fees were increased in 2018. So are these claims overstated? Well, maybe not in some cases, but maybe not in the way, not, not with the trust that is, is the sort of trust that is sometimes mentioned in the overstated claims, you know, a trust that says basically, and you can complete, uh, you can, can continue to have complete control over the asset you put into trust. You can have it when you like, you can use it whenever you want, you can take the money out of trust or the asset out of trust whenever you want, quite commonly used in relation to or talked about in relation to a main residence. Now, quite clearly, if you do that, there would be some concerns over some of those claims if you have a trust that permits you to do all of those things. So let's have a look at that. Would it give you protection from inheritance tax? A trust can clearly give you protection from inheritance tax, but not if you can continue to receive or enjoy a benefit under that trust. We all know the gift with reservation provisions and the pre-owned asset tax provisions together if needed, um, provide a pretty powerful weapon to HMRC. So if you can continue to enjoy the benefit of either current or future, the benefit of the asset in the trust, then it's not going to work for inheritance trusts. Trusts generally can, but not if you reserve that benefit. So how about protection from care home fees, etc.? Well, look, the key thing is if you make a transfer of, say, your main residence or another asset into a trust to deny yourself the benefit of it. And you know, if the trust allows you to have complete access to all the benefits anyway, it's not going to work because it will be treated as your asset. But if it's into a trust generally, then even then, the point is if you make that transfer within six months of claiming uh, benefits or needing to claim benefits, or even beyond that time, but if you made the transfer beyond before that time, and it can be shown that you deliberately, deliberately deprived yourself of the benefit that, uh, of that property, deliberately De de deprived yourself. Why do I find that so difficult? Deliberately deprived yourself of access to benefit to that property with intent to claim benefits or not have a charge put over that asset, then that will also cause you a problem. There are many cases on this and we report on it very well, in my opinion, uh, within TechLink, if you want more detail on that. And it's a similar um, a similar set of rules you'd have to conform to in relation to denying your creditors to deliberately deprive uh, yourself of assets when you knew you were about to go bankrupt, for example. And then you get to that point of probate. Would that sort of trust help you to avoid probate? Definitely, if it was a discretionary trust, it would help you to avoid probate. Um, and that could be quite powerful. However, that means you, you, you are also going to have to consider inheritance tax because it will be a chargeable lifetime transfer or a potentially exempt transfer. What about if you had a trust that was just a pure bear trust and you were the only beneficiary. If you weren't the only beneficiary under it, then I think it's fairly clear that you wouldn't avoid probate. Um, however, if you were the only beneficiary under the trust, a bear trust where you're the only beneficiary, would that help you to avoid probate? General rule is, um, and some of these trusts also propose that you have a life interest to yourself followed by discretionary trust. That gives rise to that issue of the gift of reservation provisions in relation to inheritance tax. It also means that you probably would avoid probate, but you have inheritance tax to consider. However, it's a bare trust, going back to that point, then there should be no inheritance tax if there's no potentially exempt transfer. But if it's a bare trust that has more than you in the trust, uh, then you would have a potentially exempt transfer. If you had a bare trust that is purely for you and you're the only beneficiary, as effectively a nominee ship, then you could arguably avoid the potentially exempt transfer issue but you'd have this other problem, which is that would you actually avoid um, probate if the assets were yours? You could, if the asset in the, in the trust were, say, an investment bond, then if it's in a trust, even a nominee ship, at least the nominee or the trustee would be able to cash an investment bond in uh, to get the cash. 
But I think when you're the only beneficiary that could ever benefit under that trust, and it's clearly just for you, like a nominee, then that money, I think the general conclusion is that money would have to be paid to the executors to distribute. And so you wouldn't avoid probate. And I think that's something to keep in mind. Keep in mind all of these potential challenges for these trusts. And if a trust proposes to uh, or is purported to protect you from inheritance tax, protect you from care home fees, protect you from your creditors at any point in the future and also avoid probate and at the same time allows you to have complete access to the benefits in the trust the asset in the trust to take them the asset out of the trust whenever you want then it clearly is a case of that that statement if it looks too good to be true it probably is